welcome to this Estranti YouTube video on decision trees, which is a concept that comes up in both P1 and P2 of the SEMA syllabus. So what is a decision tree? Well, all a decision tree is, is a visual representation of the decisions that we can make in a given situation, and also the outcomes associated with these decisions. So to see the core idea behind decision trees, let's consider an example. So let's say that you're meeting your friends this evening, and your friends ask you if you'd like to go to the cinema or go to a restaurant. In the town where you live, there are two restaurants, and the cinemas are currently showing two films. So we can use a decision tree to visually summarise the decisions that you and your friends are facing. So first of all, whether to go to a restaurant or go to the cinema. If you decide to go to the restaurant, then the next decision that you face is which restaurant? Restaurant A or Restaurant B? In contrast, if you decide to go to the cinema, then the decision that you face in this case is which film to see? Film A or Film B? Now these decisions will ultimately result in different outcomes. That is to say, we could imagine that restaurant A has better reviews than restaurant B. So it would seem that choosing restaurant A would be the better decision than choosing restaurant B. So by looking at these different possible outcomes that could result from the decisions that we make, can help us to decide which decision would be the best. So once we've laid out the decisions that we're facing in this decision tree form, as shown here, we can then flesh out the diagram further by adding some numbers, which we'll come to in a moment. So once we've added these numbers, what we have is something that can allow us to conduct a detailed analysis of the risk and uncertainty that we're facing in a given decision. And because it's laid out in this neat visual way, decision trees are relatively easy to understand once you're used to seeing them and working with them. So to help you to do this, let's go through a more detailed example. So for our example, imagine that we run a toy company, and our toy company has just finished creating a design for a new toy. And this new toy is radically new. So because of the innovativeness of our products, our competitors are interested. And in fact, we've been approached by one of our competitors who want to buy the rights to use our design for a one-off payment. So immediately, we have a decision to make. Do we keep the design for ourselves or do we sell it to our competitor? So we can visualise this decision with a very basic tree diagram. So the decision itself, we represent with a square and then our options are of course to keep the design or to sell it. And the outcomes of these two decisions, these two options, we represent using these circles. However, our decisions don't end here. After all, if we were to sell the design, we will immediately earn the one-off payment from that other company. However, if we choose not to sell, we need to produce the new product and we also need to make sure that we sell it. And in terms of selling it, we need to choose a distributor. So our company has contacts with a national distributor and a local distributor, and we need to choose one or the other. So we can add this second decision to our decision tree. So assuming that we have decided to keep the design for ourselves, then immediately we're faced with this second decision, that is to go with the national or the local distributor before we arrive at the final outcome. So this is now our final decision tree. It helps us to visualise the decisions that we've been faced with and also the options available to us in terms of making these decisions. However, for it to be more useful, we do need to flesh it out, as I mentioned earlier. And we do this by adding outcomes and associated probabilities. So what we do is ask our sales and marketing team to provide us with some relevant forecasts relating to the sales of this new toy. And this is what they tell us. They tell us that after conducting various analyses, that the likelihood of our toy selling well is 0.7, 70%. And the remaining 30% chance is the likelihood that our product will sell poorly. So these probabilities go on both the national and also the local scales. These are the chances that our products will do well, regardless of the distributor that we choose. However, what does change is how much profit we would make in either event. So that is to say, if our product is successful and we've chosen the national distributor, we will make a profit of £150,000. However, if our product is unsuccessful and we've gone with the national distributor, then we'll actually incur a loss of £10,000 due to the higher costs associated with using this larger distributor. In contrast, 
if we decide to go with the local distributor and our product is successful, then we earn a lower profit, only £60,000. However, things look a bit better if our product is unsuccessful. That is, if our product is unsuccessful and we've sold it through the local distributor, then we still make £30,000 of profit, according to the forecasts that our sales and marketing team have provided us with. Meanwhile, talks are ongoing with our competitor who still want to purchase the design for our new product, and they've offered us £50,000. So now we have an outcome associated with each decision that we want to make. That is, if we choose to keep our design and go for the national distributor, then these are the possible eventualities. Similarly, if we keep our design and go with the local distributor, then we could either earn £60,000 or £30,000. And then lastly, if we sell our design, then we just earn this one-off £50,000 payment from our competitor. So now we can use this information to inform our decision making and the tree structure of the diagram makes it straightforward to do this. So specifically, what we'll do is use this information on screen now to calculate the expected values of each available combination of decisions. So just as a quick recap, to calculate the expected value of a given decision, we need to multiply the different outcomes that could result from this decision by the probabilities associated with those outcomes. And then we add each of these figures together. So 0 0.7 chance of success multiplied by £150,000 of profit gives us £105,000. A 0.3, a 30% chance of being unsuccessful multiplied by a £10,000 loss is a £3,000 loss, negative £3,000. So adding negative £3,000 to £105,000 will give us an expected value of £102,000. The expected value of keeping the design for our product and then deciding to go with the national distributor. So let's repeat this process for the decisions of keeping the design for ourselves and then choosing the local distributor. So 70% chance multiplied by £6,000 is £42,000. A 30% chance multiplied by £30,000 is £9,000. Adding these together gives us an expected value of going with the local distributor of £51,000. So finally, we have the option of just selling the design to our competitor. Well, if we sell the design, then we will definitely receive the payment for it. This is the only possible outcome that can result from making the decision to sell. So £50,000 multiplied by a 100% chance is an expected value of just £50,000. Therefore, the best decision on this basis is to keep the design for ourselves and then sell it through the national distributor, as this generates the greatest expected value. So this is how a decision tree can be used to inform our decision making. So let's now talk about some of the limitations of this approach. This decision tree has not considered the time value of money. So that is to say, if we were to sell the design, then we would receive this 50,000 payment right now whereas it'll take us a longer time to actually realise these profits that we would receive whether or not we go with the local or the national distributor. So because of this, selling the design to our competitors for £50,000 is likely to be a better choice than it appears here. The decision tree, as outlined here, doesn't consider the fact that receiving money sooner is better. The next limitation is that decision trees rely on the accuracy of our estimates. The decisions that we can make using these decision trees are only as good as the information we have. So if the forecasts provided to us are far from reality, then our decision tree won't be much help at all. The final limitation is that this approach to decision making using decision trees in this way has not involved any consideration of the organization's risk appetite. So remember, we chose keeping the design for ourselves and selling through the national distributor as this generated the greatest expected value. However, this decision has been made on an assumption, specifically the assumption that our organisation is more risk seeking than risk neutral. We've gone for the decision again that generates the greatest expected value and also generates the highest potential profit. However, there is a 30% chance that taking this decision will lead to a £10,000 loss. So contrast this with the option of just selling our product directly to the competitors. 
this generates guaranteed profit, there's no chance of making a loss on this decision at all. And as such, this decision would be preferred by a company that was sufficiently risk averse. So as such, we need to remember that decision trees can help us to inform our decisions. However, they should not be the only tool that we use. We also need to include other considerations, including the time and value of money, the accuracy of any estimates that we've used, and finally, our organizational risk appetite. So this brings us to the end to this Estranti YouTube video on the concept of decision trees. So thank you very much for watching, and if you like this video, then please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Additionally, if you found this video helpful, then please head over to estranti.com, where we have a wide range of study materials available for purchase for the operational, management, and strategic levels, as well as for case study. Further, we have free resources available for all modules of the SEMA certificate, so make sure to check out our website if you're studying for any of these exams.